A good solder joint <coughs> has to first have a, have a mechanical connection. So if you're putting one of these wires through a hole in a pot, see how I've bent this at a right angle? That will keep a mechanical connection holding it tight till it cools. You've got a mechanical connection and the solder. And if you're soldering two pieces that haven't been used before, sometimes it's good to pre-tin them. If this was bare copper, I would get solder on it first by itself, solder this by itself, then put them together. And this especially is important when um, one of your copper connectors is still bare copper. A lot of wire we buy is what's called pre-tinned. This is a typical lead off of a fender style pickup. It's called stranded wire. That means it's seven strands, not one single one. And the reason it's silver <coughs> is because it's already been coated with solder. Pre-tinned because stranded wire is flexible. Yeah. You can't use solid core in a guitar because the vibration will eventually break something. You know, in a real stiff circuit board, yeah, but we use stranded wire and it is already pre-tinned. If you had bare copper, you would definitely want to pre-tin it yourself. This has been pre-tinned. Um, the, the other tricks to soldering are have enough heat. You could do a solder joint like this wire and this terminal with 15 watts. This is 80. So I could actually solder a wire to the back of this if I wanted to, which I'll go ahead and, and, and do. I would first, like I said, pre-tin it by doing this. So we have pre-tinned this. I would pre-tin this. And this takes a little more heat. You might have to have 45 watts or even sometimes 100. Um, if it's acting cakey and not running liquid like this, it's not enough heat. But it's easier to do it when you pre-tin them both than trying to cook the solder onto them when, they're, when you're still trying to heat them up. So a good looking solder joint looks like that, nice and liquid. And that's not coming off of there. If I'm soldering to the back of a tele bridge plate or one of these strat plates we put on, we call them a base plate under strat pickups, I have to use my, uh, I have a 90 watt gun, big as my baby finger, because it's just, you're heating up too much metal for a little pencil like this. But I've got this preheated and pre dipped in wax, so. We're going to also show how we would put a base plate on an existing pick pickup. These plates are made of steel and they make an Alnico rod style pickup more efficient by just focusing the field. And so the first step in putting a base plate on a pickup like this is to put a piece of masking tape across the magnets for padding. And the base plate will just fit down over the screws because these are just clearance holes. They're not threaded in there. And before I ground this, I'm going to run this pencil back and forth till all the wax turns clear. That guarantees I've heated the steel part up hot enough to melt the other side of it and it will bond it will bond to the pickup. And it smokes a little bit of uh, hopefully it's not bad for you. And when it's all clear, hold it level till it cools. It takes 30 seconds or a minute. The wax keeps it from being able to vibrate, and which vibrating steel is what microphonics is. You've heard Telly squeal, and it's because they have that copper plate under them, which technically is made of steel. So this is the same thickness and type of steel. Now when that is all turned hard again, we are just going to ground this tab to the existing black wire because that's already going to ground. So that's how I would install a base plate if it would pick up was already in the pick guard. When we are making new pickups, this is done before it's ever thrown in the wax for the first time. 
Uh, this is also a very um, smart thing to do is wrap a little bit of tape here and here on your bundle of wires so that when they fit in these spaces you don't end up with a wire on top of this wood. So this is, this is also the way Fender did it and this has to line up here because again you got a space here. So all my wires are staying inside this control cavity and it's laying down like we want. If you had a wire sitting under here you'd know it. You wouldn't want that. F these fenders like 250k. Um, Gibson's like a 500k better for it's a little more high end. The way a pot affects the tone is they're actually putting a short on the pickup. Since you've got a hot wire on this terminal and a ground on this terminal, you're actually putting a 250k short hmm. right across your pickup and that dampens some high end. Since fenders have so much high end, they can afford to have some dampened and that's why you use 250. Dan Electra's use 100 and Gibson's use 500. And you could have an open, you, you know, run a pickup straight to an output jack, it would be even a tiny bit more bright. I like CTS. I actually just trust all parts <laughs> by whatever all parts is selling because I trust them to have done the research. I think most pots are made in Mexico or Taiwan today. Our blender pots are made by CTS which is coming from Taiwan. We have to have those custom made because they're a little bit different inside. I don't know that it is. There was some kind of network just like that on early broadcasters. Instead of a tone control, they had a, but I don't think it was the same way we do it. I've mm -hmm. never really looked at a broadcaster to see how they did it, but it, it functionally b blended the two pickups. Our blender pot only shorts the hot wire of the neck pickup to the hot wire of the bridge pickup. So if you've already got, I'll illustrate again, this is the blender pot. These two wires go to the same terminals that the hot wire of the neck and the hot wire of the bridge are on. And by doing that, if you put the switch in the neck position, this is going to slowly bring in the bridge. When it's on 10, it does nothing out mm -hmm. of the circuit. You put in the bridge pickup, it's the neck you're bringing slowly in. And in the middle, all the way down to 1, this position and this are now the same. They're both on full blast. But I like the bridge on full and just a little neck. Put this somewhere in the middle. And of course, if you do this, you're going to get the third pickup. So you, you'll have 10 sounds out of your Strat instead of 5. I like Strat for clean sounds, that open airy sound. I was first attracted to music by people like Hendrix. And I love that metallic wound string, the bright wound string. So, you know, it's something I'm always trying to look for in almost all pickups. Uh, I guess I've all, I learned to play on acoustic guitars. I love that bright wound string. Whether it's, a, whether it's a classical or a steel string, you know, I put new strings on there when they get dull and dead sounding. And I like Fenders for that reason. Um, I love Gibsons too, but I just like a, still some high end. That's why I prefer myself a P90 to a humbucker. Because humbuckers are going to always have a dull wound string. That's a whole nother issue. Humbuckers are picking up a full inch of the string and that's where high end is canceled. A single coil picks up a much narrower area of the string because you've got one pole piece and um, that's that's the biggest difference in sound of single coils and, and uh, humbuckers is how you're picking up the string. That same thing you know when you have a two and four on these two settings mm -hmm. you're picking up the string two places so in effect, this wavelength of the string, this distance from here to here is what's canceled. That's why they, they call it out of phase. It's not out of phase. It's got a notch in it of whatever this length is from here to here. In humbuckers, it's a one inch wavelength that's canceled. Two and four, it's about, what is this, two and a half inches? That's what's canceled. And so it does put a notch in it, but they're not technically out of phase. They're, mm. they're in phase in a strat. 
and how home canceling works in a guitar like this, which this does have a reverse middle. We've got blacks on this side of these two, and the black wires on this side, on this one. So this was wound clockwise, this was wound clockwise, this one's wound counterclockwise. And just the winding direction alone would put these out of phase. But when I magnetize these south and this one north, they're back in phase. So the hum is only picked up by the coil. It's now out of phase and these two positions can be quiet. As long as two pickups are on, one has to be wound clockwise and one counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's basically how all hum canceling is done, whether it's a Gibson humbucker, two and four here, the left and right coil of a P-base, a stack pickup, it's always one clockwise, one counterclockwise. An electrical solder, this is 60, 40, 10 and lead with a rosin core. And it's by far the best. It's what you need to get. Most hardware stores will have electrical solder. I like it in small diameter, but there's several diameters. That's all just personal preference. And the kind of irons we typically use are Weller because they're on all day long. These are somewhat expensive, but they're heat controlled. It doesn't go full blast all the time. When it needs power, it sends extra power to it. When it's just sitting in here, it's not burning itself up. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between a more expensive solder station and just a cheap iron. Just a cheap iron is just on full blast as long as it's plugged in. And they'll, mm -hmm. they won't last as long. But for someone just setting up a guitar every month or two, it's fine to go get an inexpensive soldering pencil. Just keep the tip covered with solder.